Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I moved my table. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't going to leave it there. Right now, temporarily, it's over in front of my TV. So if that falls, it has nothing to hit but the floor, which also may worry me a little bit because that just means there's like another almost two feet that it has to fall and do damage. However, I checked the fasteners. There's no movement. They seem to be holding steady. I can't jiggle them or anything. So I think I have it solved, but I'm going to leave this like this for about a week to make sure it's okay. So yes, yes, yes. I moved the table. So today is Monday and uh, like that happened yesterday. It wasn't a great start today. I had a good day though. It turned out all right. It's, it wasn't a catastrophe. Uh, but I, uh, I woke up this morning and it's funny, I'm a travel agent, right? And I'm always kind of in tuned because uh, I cover cruising a lot. So, like, I am I must search cruising news probably uh, every almost two hours every day just to see if there's anything breaking and every, anything like that. And I kind of have this feeling today. I have a feeling one of the cruise lines, Norwegian Cruise Lines, is going to start cancelling all of their Alaska cruises out of Seattle that hadn't been canceled yet. And it's, it's just this, it's this feeling that's kind of like just gnawing at the back of your neck. You just, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And there's, there's no real proof out there that it's going to happen. Uh, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. There's no news out there saying that. Uh, so I, I went online and I said, well, let me see what sort of cruise I can book. Oh, <laughs> there are no cruises uh, left sailing out of Seattle to Alaska for the remainder of this year, except for one cruise ship. And it's in October. And the only reason that ship is sailing is because it's not one of those ones that goes back and forth from Alaska back to Seattle. It starts in Seattle, goes to Alaska, heads to Russia, and finishes in Japan. So it's a Trans-Pacific cruise with Alaska attached. Kind of like the Millennium cruise that I went on a little while back. So that's not there. And I think to myself, well, you know, maybe they're just not selling new cruises. That could be the pot, like they could be, you know, because of restrictions, they're, they're not gonna sell any new bookings, but they're still keeping them there on the books just in case. That's a possibility. But you know when you get that, um, like that, that feeling that just will not shake. It just will not leave. It's there. And uh, I, can't, I can't shake this feeling. I can't shake this feeling. Oh, and also I just wanted to mention, remember when I mentioned uh, the Royal Caribbean Hotel uh, in Jamaica? And I was thinking on going and just trying to get one of those over the water bungalows and really spoil myself. Uh, just do a once in a, a blue moon trip. By the way, I'm, I'm not going to do that trip uh, because I found out the real price. <laughs> and uh, but a lot of people were saying, well, maybe maybe they're they have restrictions there. So they're only booking a certain amount of cabins or they're they're only showing availability on you know because I could only see really weekends a lot of like one day or two days on weekends to book well I investigated even further so it has nothing to do with restrictions it has nothing to do with uh, you know only wanting to do weekends or anything like that it has everything to do with they are full and I had to search all the way until late, late 2023 to finally find six days. Couldn't even get seven days. Six days in a row that I could book one of those bungalows. 
And I said, oh, well, should I do it? Uh, probably not, because a lot can happen between now and then. Who knows? I may want to go, you know, to the Maldives or another place, uh, you know, on a more exotic trip than Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica many times. So I said, uh, but just out of curiosity, how much does it cost? And it was over $20,000. <laughs> you know how many cruises I can go on for $20,000? <laughs> I can do part of a world cruise segment for $20,000, uh, like 40 days or something like that. But uh, yeah, that, that was, I, and, and you know what? If they're sold out that far in advance, it must be a really great experience. Like it must be first class all the way. And yes, that did include first class airfare uh, from Ottawa to there. It did include all inclusive meals and drinks, and it did include uh, traveling uh, like the shuttle from the airport directly to the hotel. Uh, in a luxury sedan. So this was one of those, you know, those like crystal cruises and then they, they pick you up in a BMW and they drive you to the port. It was one of those experiences, but uh, I, I, I cannot see myself ever spending that kind of money for a six day holiday um, at, for just me uh, or even me and a friend. Uh, say, I, say I have a romantic partner that I want to bring off on something really special or I, you know what, maybe if I was going to propose or something like that, maybe that would be a different story. Uh, you'd want that to be the most mind-blowing vacation you could possibly do, right? Uh, but on everyday travel and normal travel and experiences, I'm going, man, like, like that's a year of rent. Uh, for the house, almost, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, and you know you're going to spend more than just the base money. You're going to spend money on whatever when you're down there, even if it's an all-inclusive. Somehow you're going to spend more money. Tips, whatever, taxes, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I, it's not had nothing to do with how full of, like, weekends or restrictions. It is just that popular. And at those rates, that's, that's a pretty darn good business, right? <laughs> if you can get those luxury resorts are selling out for two years in advance at those kind of rates, and they have like 40 of those bungalows, that's amazing. That is a good business venture. <laughs> Wish I'd have invested in that. Oh, oh well. So that's off the table for now. I, I have the, I'm, I'm going crazy. I do have the itch to travel, everybody. I really, really do. My big concern is who knows when they're gonna tell me I have to go in for my vaccine shot. I have like right now, I'm not even on the drawing board uh, with the list of people that are there. We are just officially starting here in Ottawa or Ontario, uh, people 80 and over in the general populace, 80 and over, is just starting now to register, not get it, just to register to get it. And we also just had a report that, uh, yeah, it's going to take a little longer to get the vaccines here than we thought. Um, uh, there's a, there's, it's going to come in a little bit more of a trickle, but then, then the floodgates are going to open. Yeah, you know when the floodgates are going to open? The floodgates are going to open for us uh, in another month, and the, by the floodgates, they mean we're n instead of getting 400,000 doses, we're going to get a million doses a week. Um, and by the time that happens, every person in the United States who wanted the shot will have their shot before we even get to the point where we're starting to get near 10% of our populace. It's a, it's a very long and arduous procedure. But can you imagine, I finally book a place to go, I'm gonna go on a trip, I'm gonna invest my money, and they say, well, if you want your shot, you gotta be here on this day. There's cancellation insurance, I guess, and it just would drive me nuts if that was to ever happen. So I'm kind of in limbo. I, I, 
maybe I'll just book a staycation someplace here, uh, up at a resort in Quebec or Ontario, up in, you know, as the weather starts to warm up here, maybe I'll, I'll go up there and just stay at a hotel in the woods, uh, surrounded by nature someplace, uh, just to get away. Uh, and change the scenery, clear the head, clear the mind. I'd like to get down and visit my sister because um, uh, they've been on lockdown, we've been in lockdown, haven't been able to visit them. Uh, yeah, so lots of things on the horizon. Just, just have to decide what to do. It's just, it, I hate the feeling of being in limbo. And I have that nagging thing in the back of my head about my work and... So yeah, it's one of those, you know, when you're, you're in that in-between mode, I'm in that in-between mode. Here I go. I don't, I don't know why I want to do this. I want to do this, but I, I don't know what to do. And I have a feeling that everybody out there is kind of experiencing the exact same thing. We want to do this, but we don't know if we can right now or should right now. We want to do that. Ah, uh, oh, well. Life's problems, we're still here. It's a fine day, it's a sunny day, it's cold, it's a Monday, but what the heck? I didn't break a table, my plaque is still there, my back still hurts. <laughs> Welcome to Monday. <laughs>